Hello and welcome to From No Crypto to No Crypto. This is Blockchain Wayne bringing you another cryptocurrency podcast. Today's episode is brought to us by Coincierge Club, mobile private key wallet and point of sale solution. Coincierge Club makes purchasing easy, safe and overall process more efficient while costing less, helping to make cryptocurrency mainstream. All right, let's see what's going on in the market today. Uh, last update we gave was prior to the weekend. Not a lot happened over the weekend, but there are some fireworks that kicked off early this morning. All right, so total cryptocurrency market cap is sitting at $210 billion. Bitcoin dominance has crept up to 54.21%. The fireworks we're talking about is many exchanges today. We're showing Bitcoin all the way as high as $7,500, most of them around $6,800, $6,900. 7,000, uh, some disparity there. I'm gonna talk about that once I hop into the news. It's the first bit of news we're gonna talk about, but that is what is causing it. Most cryptocurrencies are in the green right now, except for the one we're gonna highlight today known as Tether. Now, if you've been following crypto for a while, you know USDT, which is called Tether, is supposed to be a stable coin that's pegged to the US dollar. And today that has not been the case, so we're gonna talk about what's been going on there. But most cryptocurrencies in the green anywhere from two all the way up to five or six percent today. So overall, a green day for the market. You know, so we'll see what happens if, if we see a continuation or a bounce back down. So jumping into crypto news. So the price of Bitcoin surged from sixty three hundred to seventy five hundred dollars on Bitfinex. And it Bitfinex operates Tether LLC, the firm that oversees the development of stablecoin Tether, also known as USDT. So Bitcoin is being traded with a significant premium on exchanges that have integrated USDT, such as OK Exchange, Huobi, and many others, because traders have initiated the big sell-off of USDT to date. So that's the biggest one to date. The some sudden dump of USDT led to the price of stablecoin to drop from 94 drop, I'm sorry, to 94 cents by around 6% from its peg at the $1 rate. So the drop in the value of USDT form a premium on Tether integrated cryptocurrency exchanges. That caused it to pump across many of the exchanges, uh, but many analysts in the cryptocurrency market believe that algorithms in Asia have started to inject large amounts of cash into major cryptocurrencies and the drop in the price of Tether is merely a coincidence. Honestly, my personal opinion, this is what we found in the news, but I think it's a combination of both. A big influx of cryptocurrency buying, along with many people moving out of USDT uh, because they, we were in a dip, so a lot of people were sitting in USDT if they're a trader, and they jumped out of it pretty quickly. I initiated a sell-off of Tether and an influx of capital from Asia. Uh, over the past 12 hours, the volume of Bitcoin has increased from 3 billion to 4.8 billion, escaping its yearly low mark. More importantly, fiat to crypto exchanges have begun to see a surge in volume as well, which proves short-term rally of BTC is not wholly attributable to the implosion of Tether. So right now, Tether's sitting at about 97 cents. As I mentioned in this article, when this article came out this morning, it was around 94 cents. So just something to be aware of there. There has been some new stable coins that have hit on the market today. And I will be touching a little bit on stable coins, what they are, what's their purpose and how to use them and use them with caution. As you can see, Tether, one of the biggest ones has had a lot of controversy recently. And now we're seeing what we will call some FUD crashing that. Another thing that we saw was there was a fake email from Binance. Now it wasn't from Binance. It was made to look like it was from Binance saying that Binance was delisting USDT. Now, one, the CEO came out with a statement saying that that fake screenshot uh, was in fact fake. That could have caused some of the FUD calls to sell off, but you got to think about it. They will not just delist a crypto like that with without some much upfront notice as they have quite a few pairs on their trading exchange to USDT. So it's not as simple as just saying, hey, we're going to take USDT off. All right. So my guess is if they ever do, eliminate USDT, which could happen, you would see it replaced with another stable coin that maybe has a little bit more trust behind it, a little bit more uh, security in it, but you would see a, a, a move over, many people move over rather than just a mass sell off like we saw today. All right, so next up in the news, Fidelity just made it easier for hedge funds and other pros to invest in cryptocurrency. So Fidelity Investments, which administers more than 7.2 trillion in client assets, announced a new and separate company called Fidelity Digital Asset Services on Monday. So the firm will handle custody for cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin, execute trades on multiple exchanges for investors such as hedge funds and family offices. Other crypto companies have debuted similar products, but Fidelity is the first Wall Street incumbent 
to officially provide cryptocurrency solutions such as custody. Many have talked about it, many have said it's in the works, but Fidelity is the first to move forward with it. Uh, quoting the CEO and chairman of Fidelity, uh, Abigail Johnson, she said, our goal is to make digital native assets such as Bitcoin more accessible to investors. Uh, so that's pretty good to see out in the news today. So while we're on the subject of crypto hedge funds, let's talk about, so the number of cryptocurrency hedge funds launched has increased dramatically in 2018 despite a bearish market. About 20% of the total hedge fund launches in 2018 have been crypto funds. The industry witnessed 90 cryptocurrency fund launches by the end of the third quarter of this year, and the number could go as high as 120 by the end of Q4. That is a 1.69% more than in 2017 and 471% higher than in 2016. Overall, there are 600 hedge funds projected to go live this year. The number of crypto hedge funds has skyrocketed since the beginning of 2017. Two thirds of all currently operational crypto funds have launched in the last seven quarters through Q3 2018, according to the report. So crypto fund research also points out that crypto hedge funds are a part of some 622 crypto funds, a number which also includes funds based on venture capital and private equity together to represent assets worth $4 billion. So call it what you will. We expected to see this. But just the fact that this is all taking place in this, this extreme bear market shows you cryptocurrency is not going anywhere. It's got long-term premise, and many people believe that this is what's going to, it's going to boom. And they would not invest it unless they see extreme upside. I was telling someone today, expect the next bull market to be much bigger than the last one. We're going to see new all-time highs whenever we do bust out. When you think about all the infrastructure that's been pumped into blockchain and cryptocurrency markets over the last nine to 10 months since we started this bull market. So next up, investors are soon going to be able to trade Litecoin on the Winklevoss brothers founded at cryptocurrency exchange Gemini. The exchange announced Friday would enable soon enable deposits and trading for Litecoin, adding the early Bitcoin spinoff to its existing offerings of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Zcash. This only makes sense. Litecoin has been on Coinbase for quite some time now. And many people that have used Litecoin for payments, and other things have seen some benefit from using Litecoin. So Vice President of Engineering at the firm, Eric Weiner, wrote in a blog post that the move comes as part of the exchange's effort to support the future of money by providing a safe and regulated environment for both innovation and consumer protection. So the listing has been approved by the New York State Department of Financial Services, noting that Gemini is held to the highest standards of banking compliance and fiduciary obligations under a regulatory's watch. So this move clearly shows the government's resolve to encourage investments in cryptocurrencies, uh, you know, regulates open floodgates for institutional participation in cryptocurrencies. So next up, let's see what's going on in the news. Next, Justin Sun. Now, uh, you've heard me talk to Justin Sun before. He's the CEO of Tron. It's hinted at a forthcoming partnership with an unknown firm valued at tens of billions of dollars. One thing Justin Sun is known for, and he's known for hyping it up quite a bit, is announcing partnerships and partnerships and partnerships. Now, most of the time he comes through with their partnerships, but sometimes the hype doesn't live up to the actual meat of the partnership. But now he's saying that this one is, could be huge. This tweet was posted Friday, October 12th. Gives little information. The tweet stated, finally, first time to partner with tens of billions U.S. devaluation. Industry giant. Guess the name. And that was Justin Sun's tweet. Twitter followers are quick to join the guessing game. One proposed Alibaba. Uh, you know, Sun is a graduate Alibaba founder, Jack Moss, Coupan University. As his Twitter profile states, uh, Alibaba is worth more than $500 billion, not tens of billions. Other suggested include Baidu, Clover, and more than one said Disney. None of these have been confirmed as of press time when the article was posted, and that was Friday over the weekend. Not a lot has come out about this. I guess we'll see if this will live up to the hype. All right, next up, Operation Save the Booty has been resolved. Yes, so... Uh, the hacker who stole nearly $40,000 in Ethereum from adult entertainment startup Spank Chain has returned a stolen cryptocurrency the company announced uh, over the weekend. So according to messages posted on the company's official Twitter account, Spank Chain CEO Amin Soleimani reached an agreement with the anonymous hacker after speaking to them on the phone. Following the conversation, the hacker provided Spank Chain with the private key to an address holding the stolen funds and then further helped the company retrieve a few thousand dollars worth of funds that had been immobilized during the attack. In return, Spank Chain sent the hacker $5,000 as a bounty reward, purchased the, you know, purchased the formerly frozen tokens back 
from them for 4,000 and return the 5.5 Ethereum the hacker had used when launching the attack in the first place. So this is very lucky on, the, on account of Spank Chain. They were able to recover their booty coin. I just want to crack up every time I say that. But uh, kind of interesting to see as this hacker's motives were not to just steal the money and be gritty, but to show and exploit a flaw in their system, in their smart contracts, giving them the opportunity to fix it. What could have cost them a lot more if they didn't encounter a hacker with ulterior motives. So lucky for them, there was an honest hacker when it came to Spank Chain's hack. All right, so crypto education day, I'm gonna keep this brief, but I do wanna talk about something that came up quite a bit, got messaged quite a bit today about this, it's arbitrage. So you may hear arbitrage in economics and finance, and here's the Wikipedia definition of arbitrage. It's the practice of taking advantage of a price difference between two or more markets, striking a combination of matching deals that capitalize upon the imbalance, the profit being the difference between the market prices. What does that mean? So today we saw some extreme arbitrage where Bitcoin could have been purchased on one exchange for 64 to 6,500 and sold on another exchange for upwards of $7,000. So how do you catch these arbitrage examples? Well, there is one resource that I use. I log in quite frequently. So I mentioned this website in the past, coincheckup.com. If you go to coincheckup.com, they have a good bit of information when it comes to market data. But if you click on their analysis tab at the top of the page, one of the options that comes out is arbitrage opportunities. If you click on arbitrage opportunities, it will tell you the trading pair that has an arbitrage opportunity, what exchange to buy it on, what exchange to sell it on. Now, some of them you have to make sure you have access to both those exchanges. Sometimes it may list a foreign exchange that's not open in your country. But you wanna pay attention to this because occasionally you can come across one. One right now, which could generate quite a bit of money, is the BCD Ethereum pair Binance to KuCoin. Now, Binance to KuCoin are open in most countries, so that's why I picked that one. But that's one that showed up 15 minutes ago, uh, showing the, the highest asking price is 0 0.026 Ethereum, and the lowest at price is 0 0.00839 Ethereum. So that, that gives you a spread of 0 0.1761 Ethereum. So that gives you an option to basically trade. It would say you would buy it on Binance, sell it on KuCoin, and you could benefit from that. And that a lot of arbitrage trading is what helps keep the markets in line, which is why you don't see these, normally see drastic dip price differences, which is why Bitcoin is not 8,000 on one exchange and 6,000 on another. Many people take advantage of the arbitrage and arbitrage is really good to keep the price level across multiple markets. If you understand how to do it, you can make some money from it. Now, arbitrage is to be done with, you know, not to say large amounts of money, but you don't, want, you don't want to do it with less than 100 bucks because every time you make a trade, most exchanges have a small trading fee. Now, that the trading fees are minimal, to say the least. That, that's not really a whole lot. But then you have transfer fees, depending on what it costs to send that cryptocurrency to another exchange, right? So either way, you can make some money, but is it really worth it in the long run? Now, in the matter of minutes doing an arbitrage trade, even if you make 25, 50 to 100 bucks, that's something you've done in a matter of minutes and able to, you know, take advantage of that arbitrage. So, you know, you can use, uh, you can use coin checkup, their arbitrage link to follow that. There's also several apps out there that will tell you the different Bitcoin prices on every single exchange. It's a Bitcoin arbitrage app. The name of the app varies across platforms, whether you have an Apple or an Android phone but you can find a lot of resources out there for arbitrage trading. Just be careful, make sure you're using exchanges that you've used before, are familiar with, uh, you know, just create, create an account on exchange you haven't done your research on to make sure it's legit. As I mentioned before, decentralized exchanges are the best, but you're not gonna see a lot of arbitrage opportunities being listed from decentralized exchanges unless you are doing it manually and just monitoring both exchanges uh, manually without the use of some chart that shows you what the price differences are. So that is it for our crypto education today. Uh, as I mentioned in the past, all the articles we talk about can be found on our Facebook page from no crypto to no crypto. Uh, make sure if you haven't already, make sure you give the page a like, give it a follow. And when you click follow, make sure to click the option to see first. Just make sure you never miss an update. 
and never miss an episode from our podcast, but also you stay on top of the news articles that we post throughout the day, the ones that are most relevant to what's really happening in the crypto market. I typically you know, go through all of the articles that are out there, get rid of the ones that are FUD, the ones that are not real, the ones that are sponsored news that you'll see, which are basically a company paying to put their news out there, don't really believe in sponsored news. And just really what's happening to build this infrastructure to show where cryptocurrency is heading in the future. And that is it for our episode today. Again, I want to thank you for listening in and we will see you on the next episode.